It's ready. Oh. Okay, I'll be in in a minute. Hey folks, I'm Glenn. I'm Maureen. And today we have an update and a few developments to share with you and a change of plan. This is, uh, what is this now, uh, day 46 of our uh, involuntary lockdown challenge? 48. For day 48 of our voluntary lockdown challenge where we kind of challenged ourselves to see how long we could uh, go with our uh, food supplies and our stores, uh, namely the perishables, the food, uh, the uh, eggs, the milk, cheese, uh, coffee cream, that kind of thing, right? <laughs> it's been going very well, but we've got a bit of a, a bit of a change of plans. This has become more of a real life event as opposed to an exercise in preparedness. Well, that's what it's developed into. I mean, at, at the first few weeks and last year, even when we first started uh, preparing and we were kind of wondering about, you know, sh shortages and you know, the supply chain and whatnot. So, you know, we've been stocked up. And that's something actually that we've been doing for years, just not to this extent and, and quite so seriously. Uh, we do remote, we do live remotely after all. And it's very common for folks to, you know, do that when, when you do live in the, in the rural areas. But well, uh, there's been times yeah. where we've had to be prepared to stay in for two, three days, even up to a week particularly in the winter because of the road conditions. Well, the last uh, several weeks now, we've had all kinds of crazy weather where it's been snowing uh, incredible amounts and uh, and then cold snaps of like minus 30 Celsius. And uh, we have uh, been prepared for, you know, those kinds of shutdowns and whatnot where we just simply can't get out. So this is an exercise, an extended exercise, you might say, uh, in, in doing that. But uh, we want to make sure that we were we're ready uh, in the event of a supply chain disruption. And just in the last uh, few weeks, um, we have had some uh, border issues internationally with the Canada-U.S. border, and I'm sure it's happening in other areas of the world as well, but uh, locally right here at home, that's what's happening, and and uh, the, uh, the the truckers are, uh, you know, doing convoys and that kind of a thing due to the, due to the uh, you know, the world pandemic situation, and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, it's being very, you know, divisive, um, but this is something we have to contend with, and, and there's a lot of noise being made about it, and uh, it could very well have a rippling effect on the supply chain. And this is an event that can take away what we consider to be a luxury of being able to just go into a store and pick up what you want when you want, even more so than last year or the year before. Yeah, and, and there's actual shortages of many types of uh, materials and goods. The food is now becoming one of them and the, uh, certain foods become more in demand it's a law of economics, right? Prices go up. So we want to make a little bit of a change of plans here. I know that we are doing this extended thing. We wanted to see how far we could go, how long we could go on our perishables. And we're almost running out of certain things and, and whatnot. And, and actually, how's our list doing, Maureen? Some of the things that uh, we have lots of still and, and other things that we've gone through, like the lettuce that was gone uh, quite a while back, tomatoes our fresh fruits and veggies, our bananas that are gone, the squash is gone, cheese, eggs, our bacon is now gone, our last of our beef is gone. The pork. We still have chicken though. <laughs> oh, and a Cornish hen in the freezer, right? Uh, and yeah, the steak is gone. Now the other thing we have to do is a water run. We like to get our drinking water from a natural spring. So we stock up on that every once in a while. So we're going to make a run for that. We're going to also stock up on a few things. We decided that we're going to go out 
and we're not going to take any other chances with it jeopardizing ourselves and our, our stocks and whatnot and get caught with the shortages that we can't get mm-hmm. certain things that we want. So, you know, it's pretty serious. And, and uh, we know we we're hoping to do a, an extended thing. But uh, in light of that, I think it's best that we uh, go out and get the supplies that we need, resupply, and then we'll continue on with the challenge. Um, but just, you know, we're being transparent that uh, we're thinking, yeah, we're going to go out and while the weather is good, we have a, a break in the weather coming up over the next couple of days. Uh, it's snowing out quite a lot right now but uh that's we're supposed to get that break so uh yeah and we learned a bit of a lesson at the beginning of the pandemic um i had called the farmer where we buy a lot of our local beef and pork from and i thought oh i'll just get my beef the stores are all sold out i called her and she said that every order that they're getting from their abattoir up until june i called her in march and she says if you want meat i can get it for you in june So um, even though we know there's local food around, a lot of it has been either spoken for or taken. So there's bottlenecks in the supply chain and in the, in the system, right? So, uh, and as I said, that has rippling effects. So we want to, we want to get, get stuff while the the getting is still reasonable. Right. And uh, I mean, we're not, we're not trying to, to, to be fear mongering or anything like that, but I mean, there's a very real situation for us. And uh, being remote where we are, and uh, it's not like there's uh, 10 you know, grocery stores that we have to choose from around this neck of the woods. So uh, the, it's what they call slim pickings sometimes, right? <laughs> yes, so, but the, as far as the supplies that we do have, we still got lots of sugar, uh, coffee. Uh, we got maple syrup and we have honey and sugar. How's the cream doing? We have a liter. One liter One left liter. of cream. So <laughs> Should we keep going with a challenge on the cream? <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll come. It'll come, I'm sure. Uh, we got um, one apple left, it says yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. We have pie apples. I, ha- I froze up a bunch of pie apples. We got <clears> pie. <throat> That's good. <laughs> and we still have some green peppers. I found a way to store green peppers that they last probably twice as long in my fridge than they used and to. Lots of teas and, and garlics and herbs and spices from the garden still so Lots that's of good potatoes. and uh, the other night we had pizza that's our comfort food and maureen made a, a nice homemade pizza we used the, the last of the bacon that we had there and, and had some nice uh veggies and stuff like that on it so that was great uh yeah potatoes are still good eh yeah yeah that's yeah. good to the, to know that was your garden potatoes as well um and we got lots of dry goods flour beans rice all that kind of stuff no problem there so i mean there's there's no shortages here it's just our our fresh foods are dwindling and uh you know those perishables are are going and we'd like to restock up on those yeah like if if worse come to worse the way it is now if we couldn't get in to do a shopping we would be able to eat we'd still be fine yeah but our meals we'd have to become really creative for our meals not to be boring so we decided we're going to go out resupply and uh, replenish our stores that are being depleted and make sure that we're good um, in light of the situation that is going on. And we're going to stock up now and might be, uh, you know, good, good advice for others you know, to do the same. It never hurts to be prepared and uh, to be one step ahead, as they say. One thing we can do is take a video of the store shelves see you know if they really are empty like is this really oh when we head out yeah yeah we go to the stores i was thinking i could you know take a video of some of the store shelves and show how serious it is are are they empty because it seems i found that from store to store some will be stocked up and some will be almost bare well we'll find out we haven't been out at all out of our gate in the last 48 days uh at, at least so um myself i don't go out very much outside of the gate anyway as it is because i'm not a shopper and uh in this day and age with the situation and everything it doesn't make sense for uh me to be uh going outside when only one of us really needs to to be doing that so we're gonna uh, continue on with the challenge we're gonna have the replenishing and whatnot and we'll keep you posted as things develop we'll see you next time over and out take care